This is no one from nowhere, and you are, and I am a spirit of God. Today I want to talk to you about biblical story of Inky Enlil, language of serpent DNA. First, a quick joke. Did you hear they arrested Satan? Yes, they got him on possession. <laughs> First, I want to tell you that this book and this video is available on Amazon.com. The video is based on the book. It is available under Timothy Strong and Spirit of God, Inky Enlil and Ninher Sag in the Bible, and Anaki Creation of Humanity. Thank you very much. First, I take you to Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God Inky Enlil and Ninhursag had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Anunnaki Elohim said, Yea, shall not eat of every tree of the garden. First question, is this serpent now morphed into the medical caduceus and the World Health Organization symbols? Also, is this serpent Potentially, the tribe of Dan, which is the serpent found in Genesis 49, when Jacob calls out his sons, and the tribe of Dan is known as the serpent, DNA. Or is this the Edomites found in the ancient city of Marie, and the Edomites were known as also Esau in the Bible, and also did you know that God means Elohim? So it is in plural form. And did you know that this is in Hebrew, that Elohim means God? Is there more than one creation story happening at the same time concurrently in the same geographical area? Does the serpent DNA originate in the Ubaid period? And does this correspond to Satan or the serpent in Genesis 3? And to the lost tribe of Dan by Inki and Ninhursag? The Ubaid period 1 is sometimes called Aridu, and this corresponds to the city of Aridu from 5400 to 4700 BC, a phase limited to the extreme south of Iraq, and what was then the shores of the Persian Gulf that drained all of the Tigris-Euphrates rivers, for example. This period shows many examples of lizard-serpent-human hybrid figurines nursing their children. Eridu is also the original and the oldest recorded Anunnaki, God's city on earth, and I do say in recorded parentheses. This is the home city of the Lord God Inki, whom the name Ia, J, Yahu, Yahweh, Jahweh, is derived from. The name Yahweh is named after Ia Inki, in my opinion, the first astronaut to come to earth from the heavens to establish all earth's institutions. Famously, in this myth, called Inky in the New World Order, or simply Inky in the World Order. It states in Ezekiel 28 that King Hiram was stamped with a good seal of perfection in the Eden, also known as Bahrain in the Dilmun civilization. And then he was placed on the holy mountain of Anunnaki Elohim, which is Mount Hermon. And he was from the tribe of Dan. He is also the founding father of the Freemasons, which is found in 2 Chronicles 2.14. The city of our God is Baal, and every god in the ancient past was called a Baal, or simply El, with a separate job, as Enlil's the god of air, Adad, or Hadad, was the god of rains, as Ia Inki is the god of water, 
and Ninurta was a god of war and agriculture and farming. So we have different jobs for these Anunnaki Elohim. The Anunnaki Elohim at Mount Hermon is found in Psalm 48. And this is the same exact place where they have a pan memorial and at the same place where Jesus Christ in the Golan Heights was named the Messiah in Caesarea Philippi found in Matthew 16.13. In the Mesopotamian religion, Tiamat is the primordial sea mating with Abzu, the groundwater, produce the gods in the Babylonian epic, Unama Elish, which translates as when on high, she is referred to as a woman and has at various points in the epic, both anthropomorphic and theomorphic, meaning she is a shapeshifter and she is not a shapeshifter, featuring including breasts and a tail. She is also synchronized with Ninhursag. Tiamat bears the first generation of deities after mingling her waters with those of Abzu, her consort, and the gods continue to reproduce from a noisy new mass of divine children. Tiamat possessed the Tablet of Destinies, and in the primordial battle she gave them to Kingu, the deity she had chosen as her lover and the leader of her host, who was also one of her children. And in the epic of creation, we find that these were terrified deities and they were all rescued by King Anu, the leader of the Anunnaki, who secured their promise to revere him as the king of the gods, who fought Tiamat with the arrows of the winds, a net, a club, and including an invincible spear. Anu was later replaced by Enlil, and in the late version that has survived after the first dynasty of Babylon, later by Marduk, the son of Ea Enki. And in quotes, And the Lord stood upon Tiamat's hinder parts, and with his merciless club he smashed her skull. He cut through the channels of her blood, and he made the north wind bear it away into secret places. So we find here that the Anunnaki murdered in order to establish the new creation. And you almost need to know that Kingu's blood and body made humankind in this myth. Who is Namu? This picture reminds me of the song Brotherhood of the Snake by Testament. Who is Namu? She was a Mesopotamian goddess regarded as a creator deity in the local theology of Eridu. It is assumed that she was associated with water. She is also well attested in connection with incarnations and magic. She was regarded as the mother of Enki and in a single inscription, she appears as the wife of Anu. But it is assumed that she usually was not believed to be his spouse. From the old Babylonian period onward, she was considered to be the mother of An, the sky god of heaven, and Ki, earth, as well as a representation of the primeval sea and ocean, an association that may have come from the influence from the goddess Tiamat. Tiamat was once regarded as a sea serpent or a dragon. She is still often referred to as a monster. Through the identification has been credibly changed and challenge. In the Unuma Elish, she is clearly portrayed as a mother of monsters, but before this, she is just as clearly portrayed as a mother to all the Anunnaki gods. Here is biblical proof that Enlil was a walking and talking god found in Genesis 3.8. And they, or Adam and Eve, heard the voice of the Lord God Enlil, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam, also known as Adapa, and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God Enlil, Yahweh, amongst the trees of the garden. Is the voice of Enlil real? Did he have a home here on earth? 
This is the Occur, known as Enlil's Garden of the Gods and also to the Anunnaki Gods, that they were alone and could not be visited by human beings, but they were there at this Garden of the Gods called the Occur and also the Ziggurat Dur and Ki. The voice of Enlil means he lived, breathed, walked, and talked on earth at the Akur temple in Nippur, shown here. The song of the Ho features Enlil creating mankind with a Ho and the Anunnaki gods spreading outward from the original garden of the Anunnaki gods in Nippur. Whereas he built the Akur or the Axis Munde of earth. It also mentions the Abzu being built in a redo. In the Kesh Temple Hymn, the first recorded description found in 2600 BC of a domain of the gods is described as being the color of a garden. Quote, the four corners of heaven became green for Enlil, like a garden. End quote. The Lord God Enlil, Yahweh, was a walking and talking God in real life, and his temple, called the Akur, was the garden of the Anunnaki gods, similar to Mount Olympus for the Greek titans. Nippur is a good example of the Lord God Yahweh Enlil, sacred precinct of the mountain temple called Akur, and also the Dur and Ki. Next, I take you to Genesis 3.14-3.18. through 3, And the Lord God Enlil said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thy go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Did you know that there are real serpents in recorded history that have bodies that have been taken off their legs? That is very interesting to know, because there are actual serpents that you can see with their bodies that they used to have legs. The serpent in the medical caduceus was Ia Inki symbol in Eridu. It is still the main symbol in the World Health Organization today. Inki is the serpent of DNA, life, and wisdom. He tricks you and twists your mind in order for you to grow the kingdom of God, or Elohim, on his Ia equals earth. Can we all ask this important question about enmity? Enmity between a man and a woman, is this real? Have you ever felt enmity between a woman and a man? Is this a real DNA or genetic sequence between a man and a woman created by the genetic masters mainly the Anunnaki and also Ia Inki. Is this for real? Our life in the Anunnaki matrix is both good and evil and has a dichotomy represented in the universal law of polarity. This means or can correspond to the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. This is called polarity. This is what we experience on the daily, which everything is but a half-truth, and everything is also on the other side a lie. So everything is half-truth and half a lie. And that is exactly what we are experiencing now. But these two are reconcilable, is what the law of polarity means. So meaning that things can be hot, Things can be cold, but they are reconcilable, meaning we can get along in the end. Inky in the Garden of Eden is also an allegorical 
side of the Jesus Christ found in John 3.14, just as Moses lifted up the serpent, the symbol of Inky, or the medical caduceus in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This corresponds with the vagus nerve crucifixion and also the resurrection and ascension. And also this corresponds with the latest news found in Paris, France with the Last Supper. Now, the Last Supper is the blueprint for our lives, meaning it corresponds to astronomy and astrology. Jesus Christ had 12 apostles, so did the Jacob have 12 sons or his descendants, and you have 12 steps in AA, you have 12 knights of the round table, you have 12 sons of Odin, and you and this list goes on and on and on. This is a blueprint for all we do called our 12 months, which is corresponding to astronomy and astrology. Let's face it, did you have a birth date? Well, that birth date has a corresponding month that has a corresponding zodiac age. And just as they pictured the blue Dionysus, which was Greek, and they had him on a platter. This corresponds with the Eucharist of Jesus Christ, meaning this is my body, this is my blood, which will be given unto you. They've been eating the body of the God Kings way before Jesus Christ, and they've been having a Zodiac astronomy table way before Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, it's right in the Old Testament called the 12 sons of Jacob or the 12 tribes. So also, Dionysus was a lot later, and they forgot that part at Paris, France, because it started with Anana, Ishtar, and her descent to the underworld. Whereas, you know, she was with Tammuz or Demuzi, and later Ningazida. And they also wept in the Bible for Tammuz, because they were eating her cakes for the Queen of Heaven, found in Jeremiah. So this story goes way back. And remember, cast not stones and judge not, because you will be judged how you judge, according to Jesus Christ himself. So these stories are allegorical for the manna, which Jesus Christ is the bread of heaven. I am the bread of life, he states in John 6.48. And he says in John 6.33 that the bread of heaven is given from his Father that gives life to everything. And manna corresponds to man. Let us make man or manna in our image. So this is how everything is made is through this heavenly bread according to the Bible. And the Zodiac Astronomy, you have 12 tribes, you have 12 months, and you have 12 Zodiac tables. So this is what's going on. Just to dive a little deeper, in my opinion, the reason why the center woman is a woman of the Last Supper is because it is a Nana Ishtar. This is found in Revelation 22:16, as she and Jesus are both Venus and the morning star. And also she is archon with the Statue of Liberty, which has seven crowns. And also this corresponds to the Pleiades, which is the mystery of the seven stars. And also temple prostitution with the person standing right next to the Queen of the Last Supper. This means sacred prostitution goes way back to the original Anunnaki goddess named Anana, later Ishtar, later Anath, later Ashtoreth, later the Queen of Heaven, later many, many ones. And also you have this one is Dionysus, but it goes to the original, which is Demuzi, that they ate his body 
and drank his blood. Dionysus is the god of bread and wine, which corresponds exactly with Jesus Christ. And matter of fact, the reason why Mary Antoinette pictured in the center, and they did cut her head off because she was a, a spy for Austria in France. But anyways, she is supposedly noted as saying, let them eat their cakes, meaning let them eat the cakes from Demuzi to Dionysus to Jesus Christ. And this is the Last Supper where Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood, which will be given unto you. And matter of fact, if he was a true Hebrew, he could have not been one. He was an Amorite or he spoke in, um, you know, the not in the Hebrew tongue found in Mark 15, 34, because he was speaking not in Hebrew tongue. And also Hebrews do not drink blood. They will be cast out. And this is found in Leviticus 17. This is the actual representation. There are three sets of four with the sun, S-U-N, in the middle. And Jesus Christ himself was 30 years old in Luke 3.23. And he was related to Heli, which relates and corresponds to Helios, the sun, and also Heliopolis, which was called the city of the sun. This is astronomy and it is the blueprint for all generations, all religions, and your life now. In my opinion, the Anunnaki formed in Babylon and also called the Unuma Anu Enlil, the corresponding astronomy tables and also the zodiac table that we have today of 12. There was 18 prior, but this is now 12, equaling 12 months and also 12 eras or ages or eons. Jesus Christ says, I will be with you till the end of the age, meaning we are transforming into Aquarius. He is the God of Pisces. He was a fisher of men. So this is lasting approximately 2,160 years. Jesus started in zero. We are now going into over 2,000. Every age is 2,000 years approximate. Times 12 is 24,000. There is actually 25,920 years in one great year. Equaling 2,160 times 12 equals 25,920 years. This is 12 zodiac astronomy eras times the 12 tribes, 12 apostles, 12 sons of Odin. However you want to say it, in reality, it's just 12 zodiac astronomy tables or eras or ages. And we are all time travelers, per se, in these eras. And you are experiencing your life right now in an age, and you were born in an age and in a month, which is a zodiac astronomy astrology era. Genesis 3.16 through 3.18. Are these DNA downloads and genetics found in these three biblical verses? And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Genesis 3.17, And he unto Adam, and Lelaniki said unto Adam, or Adapa, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground. For thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Genesis 3.18 And Enlil and Enki said, 
Thorns also and thistles shalt bring forth to thee, and shalt thou eat the herb of the field. These are curses that you can realize in today's terms. In Genesis 127, it gives mention to the Anunnaki Elohim making males and females. And perhaps these were clones or a type of human hybrid that could not reproduce on their own. In this version, we can fully know that the Anunnaki Elohim made humans that could reproduce through sexual intercourse. Every myth and every story of the Anunnaki is about them creating, or they are the creators. And mostly, they did create human beings in seven or eight myths that I have mentioned, especially in this book, the Inki and Enlil and Ninhursag, Creation of Humanity in the Bible. And this is the first biblical example of denial and blame. These are obvious DNA human conditions that are set up for failures in the engineered plans for the Anunnaki, Elohim, and human beings. Sumerian hymn Anana and Utu contains an etological myth in which Utu's sister Anana begs her brother Utu to take her to the Kior or Hell or the Sumerian underworld that she may taste the fruit of a tree that grows there which will reveal to her all the secrets of sex. And once again, Anana Ishtar is the goddess of sex and war and love. And she goes there and she compiles and, and Anana tastes this fruit and becomes knowledgeable of sex. This is where they made demons like Lilith in Isaiah 34, 14. Adam's first wife that you may not have heard of, which is another myth, was a demon who could be Archon with Anana Ishtar. The Anunnaki then gave Eve, or the mother of all living, to Adam as a more submissive wife hybrid. I realize that the word or term clone could be a little overwhelming to you, but the Anunnaki are geneticists, so they have been tinkering with humanity, maybe for millions of years, but in the creation story, it goes back to six or 10,000 years. And as a note of Genesis, the book called The Day After Roswell by Philip J. Corso, who was an army general, said that when he saw the aliens that landed at Roswell, New Mexico, he said the aliens did not just look like clones in his book called The Day After Roswell. He said that the aliens did not just look like clones. They were clones. Enmity is hatefulness, an adversary that is satanic, engineered probably from the Ubaid period, at Anki's home in Eridu, Tyre, Byblos, and Baalbek, Lebanon, to name a few. The serpent tribe of Dan was known as the devil and his collection of his offspring through the woman. The debate is if Jesus Christ is the woman's offspring as the serpent seed or the redeemer for mankind, which he is, meaning that he will eventually crush Satan or the evil offspring. I realize Jesus is the good guy. One key word is enmity, which means extreme hatred. And this is a strong sense of hostility or division. Have you ever felt this in your life? Have you ever been or having a problem with another person or that extreme enmity? This is a DNA download, and probably you be the judge from our creator gods, the Anunnaki Elohim. Anunnaki Jesus clearly states in John 10.34 that he came here for division with a sword. He also stated that there are children of the devil or Satan in John 8.44 and that Jesus must be raised up as a serpent on the cross in John 3.14. I'd like to throw this next one in so you know that hard work pays off. 
that perspiration is inspiration, and that all work is not done in vain because hard work will save your life. This is found in Genesis 3.19. Enlil and Enki say, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt you return. This is Enlil's blessing, and Enki's blessing for hard working, down on the Anunnaki farm. Healing blessing in the sweat of your skin, the sweat of your brow, is called dermicidin. And dermicidin is a protein with 110 amino acids that in humans are encoded by the DCD gene. The full-length protein produces dried peptides for producing antimicrobial peptides secreted by human ecrine sweat glands onto the skin as part of the innate host defense of the immune system, meaning that sweat is actually an antibiotic for your skin. This is sweat or perspiration antibiotic that secretes through your skin and was given by the creator Anunnaki gods to encourage you to work on their earth by the sweat of your brow, which actually is a long life and good health blessing. What do you think? Next, I take you to Genesis 3.22. And the Lord God Enlil said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, or Anunnaki Elohim, to know both good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Adam literally means manna in Strong's Concordance 4478, and in Strong's Concordance 4479 means who. So anytime you hear a who, as in Daniel 315, this means manna, like the song, Who Made Who? Who made you? Ain't nobody told you? Meaning, manna means makes manna as Jesus is the manna and the bread of life found in John 6.48. And also he says, again, in John 6.33, that the manna comes down from his father, probably Anu, Enlil, and Enki, to give life to everything. Just as Nibiru here, or the planet X, gives life and takes away the tree of life, meaning there has to be some real prima materia making everything here, and this is found in the Arboros, Arboros, meaning the prime mover of creation is something like the manna, as Jesus Christ states that he is the manna. Man means manna, and it means who. Who made you? Who made who? Ain't nobody told you, meaning manna makes manna. So there is a creation mechanism that gives life to everything according to Jesus Christ found in John 6.33. Adam literally means a man made of blood, a creature made from the goddess of earth, Ninhursag. What are three types of man? Adam, condom, or Cadmon is a man made from the mud and was the idea of a peasant farmer slave species that was created by the Anunnaki gods to be farm workers. In many traditions, Adam Cadman was the prince of fools. His number was zero in the tarot deck. Adepa or Adamu was the Sumerian Babylonian version of of the first man and made in the image of the Anunnaki gods. This probably corresponds to Genesis 2-7 when the Anunnaki gods breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and the man became a living person. The Anunnaki gods, mainly Ea Inki, tricked Adapa and his descendants out of immortality because we did not reach out to the tree of life and eat from it. On the contrary, Adam did live to 930 years with more than likely including you, an eternal soul spark found in the pineal gland. We eat this fruit and it is for healing every month. 
found in Revelation 22, 1 through 2. And he shewed me a river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruits, and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations. According to Zechariah Sitchin, in his book Genesis Revisited, Yahweh said unto the woman found in Genesis 3, What have you done? The woman replies, The serpent beguiled me, and I ate. This is quite a conversation. Not only the deity can speak, Adam and Eve can also speak and understand the deity's language. So in what language did they converse? For there must have been one, according to the Bible. If Eve was the first mother, was there a first language, a mother tongue? Again, scholars begin by differing with the Bible. They assume that language was a cultural heritage rather than the evolutionary trait. It was assumed that man progressed from groans to meanful shouts on seeing prey or sensing danger to rudimentary speech as he formed clans. From words and syllables, languages were born, many languages arising simultaneously as clans, clans and tribes formed. This theory of the origin of languages not only ignored the significance of the biblical tales of the Elohim and of the incident in the Garden of Eden, it denied the biblical assertion that prior to the incident of the Tower of Babel, the whole earth was of one language and of one kind of words, that it was a deliberate act of the Elohim to disperse mankind all over the earth and confuse its languages, that they may not understand one another's speech. End quote. So in the Tower of Babel, we do have the Anunnaki, and it is found in the Lord of Arata and En Merkar. So this is where they confuse the languages and disperse mankind, meaning they were all under one language prior to this. Was this Sumerian? As Sumerian language was the very first one on earth and it is a extraterrestrial and also a language isolate meaning no one understands it mainly only we have is the cuneiform text so this is a language isolate meaning it does not exist it is not used anymore so this is an off base language and also to verify even further that these are extraterrestrials and aliens adam through Noah, in the biblical sense, lived to 930 years as Adam did. So these are not human beings. Human beings have a max age of nine, 99 to 120 years right now. So these are a different breed. So these were downloaded and they were DNA meddled or also they were genetic with the Anunnaki Elohim whereas in Genesis 6 we have the tales of the Nephilim that went into the daughters of men and mingled with the DNA and then we have Enlil which corresponds to all the flood stories that he says that I will change the lifespan of the humans from long lifespans to 120 years max prior to this in the Sumerian kings list these were obviously not humans because they were living and reigning for years of 43,200 years on average each. It goes on in Genesis Revisited with Zechariah Sitchin. But these true languages begin only about 12,000 years ago, only after the, the the deluge with the question mark? Is it not only according to the Bible that language existed at the very beginning of Homo sapiens or Adam and Eve? 
but also the fact that Sumerian texts repeatedly refer to inscribed tablets from dated from before the deluge. The Assyrian king Ashurbanipal boasted that knowledgeable as a dappa, he could read tablets from before the deluge. If so, there had to be true languages even much earlier. End quote. So we are talking about the language of Adam and Eve, are we not? They were talking in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, where they were blaming each other. The serpent made me do it, the woman says. The man says, it was a woman you gave me, God. So they were blaming each other and they were talking to a deity or Yahweh, you be the judge. This is universally the same in every Bible. But they were talking. And it is in my opinion, of course, that these are the Anunnaki. And it goes on in Genesis Revisited. And Alan Wilson, who had participated in the genetic research leading to the one mother of all conclusion, put back speech in the mouth of Eve. The human capacity for language may have only been a, from a genetic mutation that occurred in a woman who lived in Africa 200,000 years ago. He announced at a meeting in January 1989 of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, quote, Gift of Gab goes back to Eve, one newspaper headline, the story. Well, to Eve and Adam, according to the Bible. According to the book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manley P. Hall, page 34 or 348, the Kabbalistic keys to the creation of man. Quote, the universal nature of Adam is revealed in the various accounts concerning the substances of which he was formed. It was originally ordained that the dirt to be used in fashioning him derived from the seven worlds. At these planes, however, refused to give of other substances, the creator wrenched from them by force the elements to be employed in the Adamic constitution. St. Augustine discovered a netter Kiran in the name of a name. He showed the four letters A-D-A-M are the first letters of the four words. Antolia diasis arctos mesa bria. The Greek names are for the four corners of the world. The same author also sees in Adam a prototype of Christ. For he writes, quote, Adam sleeps that Eve may be formed. Christ dies that the church may be formed. While Adam sleeps, Eve is formed from his side. When Christ is dead, his side is smitten with a spear that there flow for sacraments to form the church. Adam himself was the figure of him that was to come. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And always keep in mind that you are and I am a spirit of God, peace and love be with you all.